We're here at the track at New Balance, which is one of the finest track and field facilities in the world. And we're gonna be talking about the fire protection systems that are in place here. So as you can see, this building is quite large. There are no smoke detectors in this facility, except for a few number of places, which I'll show in a second. But this entire building is fully sprinkled. So let's go ahead and show off some of the features here. So as you can see, there's speaker strobes, this is a voice and act system, it's a notifier system specifically. You can see this right here is an SPSW L speaker strobe. We have cages over them because this place also serves as a gym in some cases. So people hit things at them. This is an excellent exit sign. It's actually mirrored. This building is very high budget. I mean, if you look at all these lighting fixtures, they're extremely expensive and you can see there's like no glare in them. And um, there's also up lights. You might not be able to see, but on top of those lighting fixtures, there's light pointing at the ceiling to make the, the ceiling look good. So there's no need for smoke detectors uh, because this is a fully sprinkler facility. So let's walk out to this hallway here. You can see here, there are strobes right in these uh, little passageways. There's also sprinklers here. These are concealed sprinkler heads. So when there's a fire, these caps will melt off and then the sprinkler will then go off. But they're probably here because you don't want like a nice protrusion because then if someone hits it, then it'll flood the building. Look at how nice this building is. You do not get these views at the Reggie Lewis Center. I mean, look at that. That right there is Boston Landing. See here, we have another speaker room. This right here is exactly what I showed except there's no cage. Down here we have a six pound ABC extinguisher. So this is actually a very unique application. I'm not particularly sure why they would install a six pound extinguisher. Um, this still has a 3A40 BC rating, which is the exact same rating as a B402 extinguisher. Uh, I think the necessary, it's not really a necessary unit to have here, but I think they probably wanted this flared nozzle because it's a lot easier to apply the fires. Um, so again, very high budget. It's a little extra, but I mean, they do go above and beyond. So we're here at these exit doors. You can see there's a lot of egress here. There's double door, double door, double door. And you might be thinking, who's large enough that they need three sets of double doors um, other than remote? Uh, but, <laughs> <laughs> but the reason for this is because this is a really large facility. There's tons of people here. And uh, the larger the occupancy load, the more egress you need. So here you can see we have a large amount of doors. There also used to be alarms on top of these doors. You can see by those cover plates, they removed those for some reason. But um, we also have pole stations by the ends of the doors. Technically in these buildings and a lot of new facilities, they don't even install pole stations when it's fully sprinklered. But here I suppose they did choose to do that, which I think is the better choice, but um, lots of egress. This is one of the places in the building where there are actually normal smoke detectors. So you can see this right here is a standard addressable smoke detector. And also if you pan out to the rest of this area, you can see there are no other smoke detectors here. The reason why, again, like I said, is because this building is sprinklered. But this smoke detector here is for the elevator. So outside of all the elevators... Are you recording? Get out of here. Are you recording? Is it still going? Yeah, it's still going. All right, so outside of all the elevator lobbies, there's a smoke detector. So this is actually for elevator recall. So for those of you who don't know what that is, when the fire alarm system in the building is activated, the elevators automatically recall to the uh, main floor where the exits are. So that's for safety reasons Exercise. again. I thought you said extra cries. The reason for that is because if you're in a building and there's a fire in the building and then the elevator, you're in an elevator, you don't want to get trapped in the elevator. Um, but also at the same time, let's suppose this right here was the exit floor and you had to exit out of this floor. If the elevator were to open and there was a fire here, that'd be really, really dangerous. So what this smoke detector here does is it basically tells the elevator if there's a fire outside of the elevator. And in the event that this smoke detector trips, the elevator will not open on this floor and it'll pick an alternate floor to exit at. So these doors right here, these doors are actually stairway fire doors. So the reason they're always closed and they latch automatically is because they're supposed to stop the spread of smoke and fire throughout a building. So you can see here, they close and latch. In a lot of cases, it's really annoying for them to be closed all the time. So there's going to be magnets that hold them open. And then when the fire alarm system is activated, those doors will automatically close. But you can see here, these are both fire doors, or at least this one is. Also, you can see we have a pole station here. So this right here. We got him. This, this man is here to be a, this, stop filming me. It's stop. not true. Stop. It's not true. What do you have to say for yourself? Listen, listen, listen. No, I knew this was happening, bro. I knew this was happening. What you're doing? I knew what you're this doing is it's really good, but it's just dangerous. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I know this. I know this is happening. Okay. Thank you. What you guys do, yeah. it's supposed to be very dangerous. 
over here we actually have a fire sprinkler riser, so this is pretty interesting. And so this is basically the uh, pipes that feed several different uh, branches of the fire sprinkler system in this building. Uh, you can see we have flow switches, so those are those little red boxes there. But what those do is tie into the fire protection system. So let's say a fire sprinkler activates in this building and water starts to flow. This is going to pick it up and then these two modules here, which are uh, monitor modules, are going to monitor these flow switches and if water starts flowing, these activate and the fire alert system will go off because it makes sense if there's water flowing through the sprinkler system, there's probably a fire emergency in the building. So that's what these things are. You might see these in stairways. Um, this right here may be a standpipe. I'm not entirely sure because I didn't design this building. But in some cases, for older facilities especially, you have these pipes here where a fire department can uh, hook their hoses up to supplement the fire sprinkler system. But in this case, it does look like it is connected to the fire sprinkler system. So you can see here, we actually do have a fire alarm speaker in the stairway. In a lot of cases, people will, or builders will specify speakers and not speaker strobes. Because having strobes in a stairway where it's really confined like this can be very disorienting to people who evacuate a building. So they just install these speakers which are connected to the fire protection system. Um, so whoever's in charge can give announcements live to the people who are evacuating the building. Now, if we come down here, you can see there's even more of these flow switches. So again, this probably feeds more parts of the sprinkler system. You can see there's actually five flow switches and then there's also pressure gauges on the side. I don't know if you can see that. Um, so you can monitor how much pressure is in the sprinkler system. And then of course over here, there are monitor modules here that monitor all these flow switches um, and trip the fire alarm if necessary. So we're inside of an elevator right now. You can see we have these firefighters operation features. So it definitely varies by jurisdiction, um, but these features are kind of different. So this indicates that the fire department operation has started. And then this indicates that the fire alarm is activated and that you need to leave the building. Um, in a lot of cases, when the fire alarm activates and the elevator is recalled, the fire department can use their key to put the elevator into fire department operation. Um, so that way the, uh, they can go up and down where they need. But most of the time for general occupants like you and I, when we have a fire alarm in an elevator, it just goes to the exit floor and you need to leave the building. Where do you think you're going? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. So we're here at the warm-up track. I mean, this building is so nice, it's got its own warm-up track. But you can see here, we do have the same speaker strokes. Again, our cages up here for protection purposes. And of course, the pole stations are recessed in these little mats. So, pretty standard. So actually, over on these ceilings, there's no strobe coverage. So there's not any appliances on the ceiling, unlike the Reggie Lewis Cal Center, where well, there's a lot of strobe lights on the ceiling. But um, there's actually strobe lights along the walls, so you can see there's like one over there, there's one there. If you look at those columns up there, which those red things, you can actually see there are speaker strobes up there. Um, it's kind of hard to see with the glare. It's actually interesting that they specify white speaker strobes because I feel like red ones would have blended in better with the red column. But either way, it's pretty interesting to know. We're over here on the balcony, and as you can see, we have some different fire protection features. So as you can see, this, the entire building is sprinklered. But you have these sprinkler heads that are fairly low here. You can see if you zoom in, they do have these cages over them. If you come around this way, you can see we actually do have speaker strobes along these walls. If you zoom in over there, they're just standard uh, SPSWL speaker strobes. But what's interesting, like I said, there's no conventional smoke detector in this facility because. Um, that would just be a lot of unnecessary work and also it's fully sprinkler. But we do have beam detectors. If you zoom in on that little microscope looking thing, that's actually a beam detector. So how it works is it's an optical sensor and it aims that way. And on the other side, somewhere over there, there's some sort of receiving, uh, in a lot of cases like this reflective thing. But when there's smoke and it rises, it'll obstruct the beam of light coming out of that and it'll realize that there's a fire emergency and that's what trips the fire alarm system. As you can see, this is a very high budget facility, especially in terms of lighting. You can see here that these are actually bubble interceptor lights. Um, they're really strong, but there's like really no glare. You'll see that in the uh, track facility as well. But you can see I'm close up here. Also, this entire building here, again, like I said, very high budget. They have light fixtures on top of these down lights, because obviously these lights here point down towards the courts and whatnot. But then they also have ceiling lights to make the ceiling look nice, which is kind of sophisticated, I guess, but I mean, it definitely shows that there was a lot of effort into this building. Hey man, ain't you fire alarm dude, 5967? Who's that? Yeah, that's me. Oh my God, bro. Uh, how's it feel to uh, hit 20,000? Honestly, it's a small feeling. 
Yeah. Yeah. We did it. It's a surreal feeling. We did it. We did it! But honestly, it is a really surreal feeling because when I started the channel like many years ago, there's really no expectation that it would go anywhere about something as niche as these things right here. But um, I mean, over the past few years, it's really turned into something special. Um, I mean, pretty much everyone who's supported me along the way from like the greatest cameraman of all time to uh, you know friends, family, subscribers, viewers, commenters, people who engage. Uh, it's been really special. It's honestly, uh, I mean, I honestly still can't believe that. I know I'm kind of just spewing here, but like, Sometimes I look at my channel and I'm just like, there's no way that's me. Like, I, make, I literally make videos about fire alarms, which is like my childhood obsession many years ago. Um, but it's turned into something special, and uh, I couldn't be more grateful to everyone for making it what it is today. So thank you guys very much. Hey, so I hear you're going to college. What can we expect from the channel then? Oh, uh, shoot. So, great question. Honestly, not too much is going to change. I've already been in the process of pre-recording a lot of videos. Um, so, like, for example, if I'm filming, like, a system test or something, before I change the system, I'll film another system test for the future. Um, so I already have a lot of system tests and things like that planned for when I'm not home. Um, I'll be pre-recording a lot of videos, and, of course, when I'm at college, if something interesting happens, like, for example, someone blows up a microwave in the dorm, then you'll have that content as well. But not too much is going to change. I'll, I'll still try and post stuff. Okay. That's real nice. Any other closing words? I just want to say that the greatest cameraman of all time is currently filming this video. You can turn the camera on yourself. Okay. This guy's the GOAT right here. G-O-A-T, like LeBron James, who's the greatest basketball player of all time. Um, but other than that, thank you guys for the last nine years. It's been really special, and uh, here's the nine more years. Actually, more than nine years. All right, thank you guys. Take care. What are you going to do about the allegations? How did you know? Let's go, Tim! Yeah, Tim! This is E2 Boys High School Line. Let's go, Tim! How far the walk is it? Go get him, Tim! Let's go, Tim! Very strong. You can see another monitor module. This thing is monitoring this flow switch. This one's also in a cabinet and looks fairly nice. Of course, over here by the elevators, another smoke detector above there for the elevator recall. And if we go out into this vestibule, speaker. Interesting mounting for this pole station here. You can see it's mounted kind of on the side here. And of course, you have a label at the top. Node one, loop one, module 43. That's gonna do it for today. Thank you for tuning into this video from the track.